y'all already know what time it is, bro. Y'all already know what time it is. Shouts out to Mr. Ballin. You know what I'm saying? He dropped a new video for us, and y'all know I had to come on and deliver for y'all. Y'all know I don't let y'all down when it comes to Mr. Ballin. Y'all know that. You feel me? And your boy is definitely about to lock back in when it comes to these reactions. I've been telling him. Like working like shit. Well, bro, I'm not the key said in that video, bro. Y'all know what's been going up with, with your boy, you know what I'm saying? But today we're gonna be checking out Taurus sneak into resident area in Mexico. Like, share, comment, subscribe, man. I think y'all know what this is, man. Scary hour. I try to drop one of these every night for y'all. Get this video to 300 likes, and uh, I ain't finna hold y'all up, bro. I ain't finna hold y'all up because I know y'all been waiting. I know y'all been waiting. So let's get into it, gang. Let's get it. In 2021, a mother and her two sons were on vacation in Cancun, Mexico. One night, while they were staying at their resort, all the kids were invited to play in this big game of resort-wide hide-and-seek, where the hotel staff would count and the kids would hide. And so one of this woman's sons decided he wanted to play, and after the staff began counting, he took off running. And after only a few seconds, he finds the perfect hiding spot. It's this little nook tucked away in the darkness right on the edge of the hotel's property. But after he got down in this little space and he tucked down and he's hiding, he realized he was not alone. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, the next time you're serving ice cream at the local county fair and the like button comes up to you and asks for a vanilla cone, give them one, but don't use vanilla ice cream, use vanilla mayonnaise. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn I mean, vanilla mayonnaise, huh? What the hell kind of mayonnaise? What? <laughs> vanilla Min mayonnaise? Let me know what that looks like. I mean, like, Lord. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. June 10th, 2021, Jennifer Buell and her two sons, 12-year-old Charlie and 7-year-old Johnny, touched down at Cancun International Airport in Cancun, Mexico. The family, who lived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, was there for a nice long vacation during the kids' summer break, which had started just a few weeks earlier. After getting off the plane and getting their luggage, the Buell family made their way out of the airport and they hopped on a shuttle that brought them to their resort. They were staying at Club Med Cancun, which is a very popular all-inclusive family resort that's located right at the tip of the Riviera Maya. And the Riviera Maya is just stunningly beautiful. It's this stretch on the western side of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico that's basically all white sand beaches and beautiful clear turquoise water. But Club Med Cancun's fabulous location was not the only reason why families loved going there so much. Club Med, the huge hotel company behind this particular resort, is known for their gentil organisateur. They call them GOs for short. And basically, these are staff members employed by Club Med at all of their locations everywhere in the world whose sole job is to make sure the guests staying at their hotels have a truly unforgettable experience. And so these really friendly GOs are always okay. First off, like, are, are we doing background checks on these people? This, that, and the third. Because again, bro, y'all don't want to hire nobody, and they end up being a crazy serial killer, like you know, rapist or kidnapper. Like, now I'm saying, like, yo, I hope y'all doing y'all proper research on these type of people, man. Have a truly unforgettable experience. And so these really friendly GOs are always walking around these hotels and not, talking to the guests and point. Yeah, like some mom like, might be a little bit too friendly if you get what I mean. Know what I mean? friendly geos are always walking around these hotels and talking to the guests and pointing them to the different places they can go within the hotel and they encourage the guests to interact with each other and to participate in resort activities and so a stay at a club med hotel whether it's cancun or anywhere in the world is known to be very upbeat and highly interactive so jennifer and her two sons they get off the shuttle at club med cancun they go inside they get checked in they make their way to their room they drop their 
bags, and then they head out to explore the hotel. And pretty much right away, there were geos all over the place coming up to welcome them to the hotel and pointing them to the best restaurants, the best places to go swimming, and what activities were coming up that night and what to look forward to that week. And right away, what stood out to the Buell family, specifically Charlie and Johnny, was the Kids Club slash Teens Club. Basically, the GOs organized really fun games and activities just for the kids, depending on what age they were. And so this was really appealing to Charlie and Johnny to go play with other kids. And it was appealing to Jennifer because this would mean she could go off and actually relax because she would have childcare. So starting that first night and over the next week they were in Cancun, Jennifer made sure they always were around the resort so that the boys could just take off and go hang out with this kids club teen club whenever they wanted. And so the routine that the Buell family adopted over the course of their vacation was they would get up early, they would go to the white sand beaches right outside of their resort, and then after coming back to the resort, Charlie would almost always cut loose and go hang out for the rest of the day with the kids in the teen club kids club and Johnny he mostly stayed with his mom but over the course of the day he would leave and do one-off activities with the club and then at 9 15 p.m. At and they would make their way in to see one of the shows that the geos were putting on ranging from comedy sketches to Ben, until a simple game of hide and seek changed everything. Oh lord, here we go. Here we go. Oh lord. <sighs> Today's video is sponsored by Rocket Money, formerly oh. Truebill. When you become an adult, two things always happen. Number one, you immediately develop flu-like symptoms right, and they never really- I don't know what's been going on with this damn mic. I think I, 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 think I need to get a new mic or something, y'all, because this shit has just been messing up a lot lately, like- Sorry, uh, let's go. The family got up and they so rough. Okay, let's go. On June 18th, so roughly one week after the Buell family had arrived in Mexico, the family got up and they began their typical vacation routine. They headed to the beach, and then afterwards, Charlie broke off and went to spend time with the kids at the Teen Club Kids Club, and Johnny and Jennifer, they mostly stayed together for the rest of the afternoon. That evening, around 8.30 p.m., after all three of the Buells had had dinner, they decided to split up before rejoining at 9.15 to go in and see a show. Johnny wanted to head downstairs and go see a kids-only show. Jennifer wanted to head up to the second level to have chocolate fondue dessert with a friend she had made at the resort, and Charlie wanted to meet up with his friends from the Kids Club Teens Club out on the pool deck where the GOs were organizing a big game of hide and seek. And so after watching his mother walk upstairs to the fondue restaurant and watching his younger brother head downstairs to the kids only show, Charlie turned and ran towards the pool deck. And when he got there, he immediately linked up with his best friend from the vacation, a 13 year old named Cyrus. And very quickly after that, the GOs who were on the pool deck with all these other kids that were out there, they said, okay, we're gonna start counting. You guys all hide. And so the GOs, they walked to the side of this big pool deck, they covered their eyes, they began counting, and all the kids, Charlie and Cyrus included, scattered to find the best hiding spot. And right away, as Charlie and Cyrus are looking for places to hide, they're seeing the other kids are taking up all the best hiding spots. And so for a second, they're panicking. They're not gonna have a good spot. Then both of the boys looked over to the side of the pool deck and they realized there is a perfect hiding spot that nobody's taken. Around the outside of this huge open air pool deck was a metal fence. It was only a couple of feet tall and it was made up of metal bars so you could see right through it. It was basically in place just to denote the edges of the resort property. And on one length of this perimeter fence, the south side of this fence, there was a gate built into this fence. And this gate was almost always closed and locked. The only time it was opened was when a GO or another hotel staff member would open it to lead guests out of the resort property to go off and do some excursion. But for some reason on the night of June 18th, this fence was wide open. On the other side of this fence was just this small rectangular platform that jutted out about 10 feet from the pool deck, same level as the pool deck. And mm -hmm. if you were standing on this platform with your back to the pool deck, on your left side would be a very small flight of stairs, just a couple of steps going down. 
And so Charlie and Cyrus, they look over and they see this gate is open and they know there are those stairs kind of tucked down below the platform. And they're thinking if we crouch down on those steps, no one will see us from the pool deck. We'll be obscured from view. And so Charlie and Cyrus, they run over to the open gate, they go through, they walk down a couple of steps and they kind of tuck themselves down so they can barely look up and over onto the pool deck to see if anyone's coming, but they can tell there's no way anyone is going to see them unless they literally walk through the gate and are looking down the steps at them. And so Charlie and Cyrus, they're giggling with excitement because they know they have found the perfect hiding spot and they're listening as the geos are calling out, okay, ready or not, here we come. And after a couple of minutes, they're hearing the sound of the geos finding all the other kids all over the pool deck. You know, there were some really good hiding spots, but eventually all the kids are found except for Charlie and Cyrus. And so Charlie and Cyrus, they start looking at each other and they're really excited about this, but they know no one's going to find them. But right before Cyrus and Charlie stood up and revealed themselves, Cyrus happened to notice there was a hose, like a garden hose that was draped down the steps that they were on. And for some reason, the water was turned on. And so Cyrus grabbed the hose and as he stood up turning away from Charlie he began spraying the water onto the pool deck onto the geos and all the kids who didn't know where they were and so everybody on the pool deck is suddenly laughing and running away from the water it's totally chaos and Cyrus thinks it's hysterical he's still just spraying everybody down and then at some point Cyrus stops and turns to see what Charlie's reaction is to this absolute bedlam that he's created on the pool deck but when Cyrus turns around Bro, I know, I just know for a goddamn well they did not just throw a damn ad in here, man. Charlie's not there. Meanwhile, two other hotel guests who had nothing to do with this game of hide and seek, it was a mother and her adult son, they were having a meal up in the second floor restaurant that overlooked the pool deck. And as they're sitting there enjoying their meal, they suddenly hear the sound of boys screaming. Now immediately they both can tell this is not a play scream. Someone is actually in danger, someone is hurt, something's going on here. And they try to look down What's onto the pool on, deck bro? where these screams seem to be coming from, but they can't tell. It's dark out there they can't see what's going on and so acting on instinct the woman and her son just stand up and start running through the restaurant and making their way downstairs and as they're doing this the woman's husband actually sees her charging through and he along with two other boys that happen to be near him just start running after them knowing that whatever's going on it's bad so they have to go help and so when these five people get down to the pool deck they hear the sound of the boys screaming again and they can tell it's coming from that open Yo. gate that platform area where Charlie and Cyrus had been hiding. And so these five people charge through the still open gate. They go out onto the- Bro, do y'all think it's like a door down there or some shit, bro? Like a door and somebody possibly like snatched up the kid or something, bro? Like this is just weird, bro. Cause he just, was just spraying the counselors and the other kids. And then he turned around and he's just disappeared. Like it has to be like a door or something, bro. We're like right there or something, man. And hiding. And so these five people charge through the still open gate. They go out onto this platform and they look down the little flight of stairs and they see Cyrus. They don't see anybody else on the platform. It's just this one boy and he looks totally shaken up, totally hysterical. And it's clear he is one of the boys that was screaming. And then before they could even ask him what was going on, they hear a sound coming from somewhere below the steps and they all oh, turn and literally out of the darkness, Charlie just suddenly emerges and he looks up at the adults and just says in a very calm voice, save me, save me. This normally what? completely off limits fenced off platform that jutted out past the pool deck where the boys were hiding. That was actually a dock that sat over a swampy lagoon and underneath Whoa. that dock was a nest of crocodiles. And the whoa, 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 whoa. A nest of what? A nest of what, bruh? Why is that even? Yo, ain't no way in the hell, bro. What? And underneath that dock was a nest of crocodiles. And when Cyrus like, and Charlie were like, on that lower step, the crocodiles had noticed them. And when Cyrus had stood up and begun spraying the water onto the pool deck, one of those crocodiles, a 13 foot monster, had come out of the water, oh turned around, 
and literally leapt up onto those steps, bit Charlie by the oh. leg, and pulled him into the oh water. Oh my god! That woman and her son had heard while they were in that restaurant were Cyrus's and Charlie's. Because initially, no. when Charlie was pulled into the water, he didn't go directly under. And so Cyrus had managed to grab onto Charlie's arms, and he was trying to pull Charlie out of the crocodile's mouth, and the two of them were screaming for help. But by the time that woman and the other four people got down to the platform, Cyrus lost his grip on Charlie, and the croc and Charlie went under the water. And so by the time that woman and the other four people got down to, the t to Charlie's arms, he didn't restaurant were Cyrus's and Charlie's because initially when Charlie was pulled into the water he didn't go directly under and so Cyrus had managed to grab onto Charlie's arms and he was trying to pull Charlie out of the crocodile's mouth and the two of them were screaming for help but by the time that woman and the other four people got down to the platform Cyrus lost his grip on Charlie and the croc and Charlie went under the water and so those five people were standing there when the crocodile and Charlie just came back out oh. of the water and that's when Charlie was saying, save me, save me. He was in the crocodile's mouth. And when these five people saw Charlie and understood what was going on, without any hesitation, the adults leapt into the dark lagoon waters no. that are clearly infested with crocodiles and began beating the crap out of this crocodile. And Who while this melee is happening in these dark, murky lagoon waters with crocodiles everywhere, someone had gone into the fondue bar and told Jeff Jennifer, your son's being attacked by a crocodile. And she instantly leapt up and just- Hey bro, do you imagine like, like the mom's face at this point, bro? Just why, just hearing this person say her kids being, being, you know, attacked by a crocodile right now. She probably lost her shits, bro. Like what? Jennifer, your son's being attacked by a crocodile. And she instantly leapt up and just ran across the restaurant, knocking anything over that was in her way. Right. And finally, she got downstairs to the pool deck. She went through that gate, out to that platform, and she saw her boy. Charlie was laying on his back, surrounded by totally frantic and hysterical adults. Charlie's leg looked like it had been through a meat grinder, mm. but Charlie was awake and he was talking to the adults near him. In the time it took wow. Jennifer to run through the restaurant and get down to the pool deck, those adults who had leapt into the murky lagoon water to fight with this crocodile had literally beaten it so badly that it released Charlie. And according to the wow. people who watched this happen, this crocodile was putting up an unbelievable fight. It was whipping its head oh, side yeah, to side, sure. tearing into oh, Charlie. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Those crocodiles, boy, they are ruthless, bro. And they are hell up strong. So it's gonna take a lot for you to even, like, get that crocodile to release his, his, his bite. I'm telling y'all, bro, them things are vicious, bro. His leg, it kept pulling Charlie deeper and deeper into the water, and these adults just didn't stop. They were yanking on this crocodile, punching its eyes, gouging its eyes, and finally, it worked. When Charlie was finally pulled to safety and was laying on the dock, he was in rough shape, and no one knew if he was going to survive or not. Right. But luckily, there just happened to be a trauma nurse who was staying at the resort wow. who came outside. She assessed the situation, and she took Charlie she stopped the bleeding in his leg and she stayed with him and kept him calm until paramedics finally arrived. Charlie would be rushed to the hospital where he would immediately undergo several surgeries that would save his life. Also, surgeons were able to miraculously save oh his leg. Initially, it seemed like he might have to have it. Oh my God, that is such a blessing right here, man. Like this young man is so strong but it be like and he he's he he, he 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 could possibly be traumatized right now bro like for the rest of, like like bro that's an amazing story that you survived that man like that is crazy man oh my Lord. surgeons were able to miraculously save his leg wow. initially it seemed like he might have leg. to have it amputated wow. as for club med their response mm. to this incident was enormous not only did they pay for all of charlie's medical bills but they also invested a lot of money into securing not only that fence and gate that led to the dock where he was attacked but also just generally speaking around the resort to make sure there were no more attacks today i mean, I mean but then again like that should have even been 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 taken care of before they the, those kids even got there you supposed to already been did that already you know what i'm saying you supposed to been did that you know what i'm saying to prevent something like this happening like thank god charlie survived but come on man you, you gotta prevent this from other like you know um 
when I stopped this from happening again. Like, come on, man. Like, this, like that is crazy dangerous, bro. He could have easily lost his life. Easily. But also just generally speaking around the resort to make sure there were no more attacks. Today, Charlie is back in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with his family. And considering the horrible mm. trauma he went through, he's remarkably well adjusted. In fact, in the Halloween that followed this attack, Charlie dressed up as a crocodile. Wow, now that's petty. <laughs> so that that's petty and funny at the same time, bro. But like, it's like, dog, like that was something serious right there. But, it, but, but when they dressed up as an alligator as Halloween after the fact, that's amazing, bro. Shouts out to Charlie, bro. Shouts out to everyone that that was in this video. Shouts out to Mr. Ball if he, if he even giving up this content. But let's hold on. That's, That's gonna do it. If you got something out of this episode and you haven't done this already, the next time you're working at the local county fair selling ice cream and the like button comes up to you. Oh yeah, he's pretty much just doing, doing this thing again, bro. Shouts out to Mr. Ballin, man. Shouts out to y'all for tuning into this banger, bro. Y'all already knew, bro. This was another crazy story from Mr. Ballin, man. He never lets us down. He always give us A1 stories every single time. And make sure you guys are tuned in tomorrow when i drop another one for y'all man and make sure you guys are also um subscribe to the channel if you're not please go ahead and subscribe man because i'm definitely going to be coming back with a lot more content man i love y'all man and s r t gang i am out this thing man let's get it